So the title of this message is The Self Addict. Amen. The Self Addict. Just like a crack addict or a heroin addict, I think selfishness is like a drug. I think it's an addictive drug. Everything in our culture uh, causes us to, 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 to get high on ourselves. That's what social media is. It's a, it's a self-inflicted symposium of constant praise. Constant got to be praised. Constantly. Every, now how many pictures can you take in a day? How many different hairstyles can you show? How many times can we say we like that? How many? I mean, it's like they never get enough because they did it all day that, yesterday, and they'll come back today and want more, and want more adoration and attention. To the point that they start to post the minute things of their life just to get attention. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The selfie. That's a derivative of a culture so gone off of themselves. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Where we all have become our own little gods. Are you there? Now the problem with that is we can't. Most of our relationships are failing because everybody wants to be the one. Nobody is selfless and sacrifice for the other one. So because we are our own gods, we can't be around nobody because gods don't seem to get along. <laughs> you know, gods like exclusive worship and they ain't sharing no worship. So that's why we can't get along. You wonder why your relationships don't, fo don't work is because you are God and they are God and two gods can't get along. <laughs> gods need what? Worshippers. Say amen. amen. And if I think I'm a God, I ain't worshiping you, so you're going to worship me or we're going to go our separate way. So you got to understand that uh, uh, following Christ breaks us from ourself. As a matter of fact, we lose our identity. Paul said, Paul said, everything that I gained in the world, everything I thought I was, my education, my knowledge, the name, my, my prestige, my ego, everything, I count it all as dung. It's nothing now. In other words, I allow Christ to break me down to build me into what he wants. Not what I want to be. Not what I was before. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But the new creature, and that's why many of you all say you say, but you've never even seen the new person. Because you still operate out in the old person. You have never let him be. You have never broken yourself down enough to let him build the new you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, addicted to self. Now, y'all know this is true. Ain't no need in y'all. Y'all know this is true. Look at how they, oh, well, I, I get into a little. I get it. I get it. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 3, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to give you some word on it. I want you to see it. I was going to preach on something else. I had all this different types of teaching and you know I always think about it. let me get, let me reveal this deep teaching and let me go into this and let me do a little research here and just hit them with this and you know I'm, that's why I think when I when I be ready to teach and then it's like why? Why do all that when they when the basics of, of it they don't got the basics. You know that's what's wrong with people they so deep without basics. They don't have the basics. They, 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 can, t they can tell you what CERN is but can't tell you what the fruit of the spirit is. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They can break down the Illuminati, but hate their mama. See, they don't have the basics. It's the basics that we need. Amen. We need to do the book. And so I keep thinking that if you keep teaching deep and keep teaching people the deep things of God and revelation and all that, that they'll grow. But I realize it's not necessarily true. They'll just get deep. They'll get deep but never deal with the true issues that easily beset them, the real problems in their life. Because what happens is if you don't deal, most of the time what people do is they take spirituality like peanut butter and spread it over all the garbage in their life. And they, and they keep spreading it over all the garbage and never deal with the garbage. And so at some point we have to say deal. It's not magic. Ain't going to be no one day you wake up and it appears. You're going to have to decide, I'm going to deal with this marriage. I'm going to deal with my attitude. I'm going to deal with my lust. I'm going to deal with my addiction. I'm going to deal with my anger. I'm going to deal with my rejection. I'm going to deal with it. Because what Christ does is cause us to confront us. Makes you confront yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because before we know Christ, we are right. We, are, we live by understanding I'm right. But Christ, when we find Christ, he begins to break us down and shows us, uh, teaches us to confront us, to see the real us. Yes. 
the, the, the us other people see but don't tell us. So that we can become balanced in who we really are and stop living out of this image of us. Is this too much? Are y'all there? Now many of us have inherited narcissism. We've inherited selfishness. Many of us can trace it back to our parents or grandparents or whoever raised us. Many of us have picked that trait up of, of self-centeredness and, we and we're perpetuating that now to the next generation. Now I want to show you something because I want to show you in a word that this is the last day mentality. Not selfishness is the last day mentality. This is what Satan uh, is busy building a culture of, of total. That, that's why did you know uh, the, the, the satanic motto or theme is do what thou wilt. That's satanic uh, 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 doctrine, not one on one, do what thou wilt, which means do what you want to do. That's selfishness. Don't matter who it hurt, don't matter who it destroyed, don't do what you want to do. Don't matter how other people feel about it. You just do what you do you. This is the motto, and that's what you're seeing in a culture where anything that people think up to do, uh, any word hairstyle, any person, anything, any this word, they don't care that I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing what I want to do. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, now that's okay if you want to destroy yourself, but the problem is, is when these behaviors get into uh, have, uh, I, I want, I want, I want to, I want to go, I want to put on a dress and go in the girl's bathroom. See that now, now we get into something else. But because do what thou wilt means that I have to accept that you, a man, want to go in the girl's bathroom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so that's where this culture is, 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 is has become toxic. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And destructive. Now I'm saying this because you're going to have to understand this is where all, all of your life has been building towards you being selfish. Everything in your life is about you. That you, you be, you've been trained in this since you were a child, how to be selfish, how to be. You may think you are giving the loving person, but in reality, most of what you do has a motive behind it. Meaning that you only give to get. You only give to give an impression that you are humble or that you're a good person. Say amen. See, when we really break down why we do what we do, see, that's why I love the word. The Bible says that the word is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart, which means God's word judges my motive. Why am I? It ain't that I did it. It's why I'm doing. See, Jesus, the reason why the Pharisees hated Christ, because he wasn't talking about the good works they were doing. He was talking about the motive behind why they were doing it. That's why they got mad because he started talking about your, your, your real heart. Oh, I see that you do fast, but this is why you fasting, to appear unto men to be spiritual. Well, they got mad because they felt like, well, we're doing the, yeah, you're doing the fast, but, you're not, but, you're, but, you're, but your spirit behind it is wrong. I know you ain't having sex with the woman, but you're doing it in your heart. See, that's, see there's the motive behind it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So if you're in church long enough, you'll, you'll become a Pharisee where you'll be doing the right things. For the, with the wrong heart. And, one of the, and, and listen, revival of being renewed or restored is getting back to where your heart match your actions. Y'all ain't ready. When you go back to where you had a pure motive for doing stuff. You didn't show up to church to be seen. You didn't show up to church because the past said. You didn't show up. To, it's, a, it's, it's a pure heart. That's what revival is. Getting, get, getting back to the pure heart. Y'all y'all hearing what I'm saying? All right. Let's go here. Now, look at 2 Timothy. Let's look at chapter, chapter 3. You know, people are saying, well, you know, they want me to, they, they probably don't lie. Well, why don't you teach on this and teach on the flat earth and, you know, teach on, man, I ain't teaching on that stuff. Because this is, that, the flat earth ain't what Christian problem is. None of that stuff they want you to talk about is their problem. That's why they want you to talk about it. What they don't want you to talk about is their real heart. It's why they can't get along with nobody. Why they can't stay in the church past two weeks. Why everybody seems to be against them. Why they out there isolated by themselves. That's what they don't want you to talk about. Why they still hate their mama. They don't want you to talk about stuff like that. Why they still think their baby daddy is the devil. Don't talk about that. See, don't deal with the real issues of my heart. Give me the peanut butter and smooth over 
Give me something to smooth. Let me give me something to cover up all my issues so I go into deepness. That's why I said they know more about the, in, the, the, the New World Order. They want to talk about all of that deep stuff, Hebrew, Israelite stuff. They want to do all of that, but the real issues of the heart, you can't get along with your wife. But yet I could tell you what Esau did, and I could tell you, see what I mean? I could tell you what Jacob said. Now, what about what your wife said? <laughs> I could talk about the children of Israel, but I don't even know what my own children are going through. See, there's a great hypocrisy in the church to go after knowledge and be deep, but skip over the issues that's really prevailing in our life. Amen. See, when we leave here, that our issue is what's beating us up for real, but we can come in here and lift our hands while as long as the music playing and get a good feeling, but we go home and live in chaos. Amen. And what y'all don't realize is you Negroes are dressed up in here, but I know the cause I get, you come to me with the chaos. But in front of your brothers and sisters, you look good and like you're doing all right, but the pastor sees the chaos. Amen. And I'm tired of the chaos, so I'm just wanna tell you straight up, start living this thing or go on and do something else. Y'all there are not there. I made a decision years ago, I'm not going to live right at church and live in hell the rest of the week. I know I won't do that. Either this is real or it ain't. I can do other things. Trust me, I can, I can go have some other fun. And look at this. 2 Timothy chapter 2, chapter 3. Y'all there? Look at verse 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Let me give you a little bit more understanding of that scripture. Okay, this know also that in the last days, perilous, say perilous. perilous. Now that word perilous means reducing the strength. Mm -hmm. Time's going to come where the strength is going to be reduced. The strength of the church yes. is going to be reduced. The strength of love mm -hmm. is going to be reduced. Because the only way we can become a selfish culture is if we lose, start, start, start being reduced. Now, that's what's happening now, where uh, you can get more people to come to any other meeting but prayer. Amen. You can get more people to come to, any, to do any other thing in the church but fast. Amen. Amen. Some of us have never fasted. Let's see, I feel the Holy Ghost going this way. Some of us don't even know what fasting is. We have no idea what it is to even fast. Yet the Bible teaches that that is a disciple's discipline to fast. So are you hearing what I'm saying? One of, the, one, of the, one of the obvious ways you know when to fast is when you see yourself getting overweight. Now, getting overweight is telling you something. It's telling you something's out of control. Something's out of control. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so therefore, that's an automatic Understanding to fast that means to begin to buffet my body. Don't stop giving in to my flesh Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because we do, now fasting is where you derive spiritual power And so but but see I'm, I'm preaching this spiritual principle to people who ain't spiritual So even though I'm telling you what you should do most people won't do it because it doesn't register that they need this Are you understanding what I'm saying? If, if, if most of you all are battling addictions, you know it, you got some addiction somewhere. Most of y'all so deep in pornography, you can't think straight. And you're never going to get delivered until you begin to fast, to begin to break the power of your flesh by what the Bible says, denying it. You can go to 12 step all you want to, or you could take one step and begin to deny yourself. See, many times people, I'm telling you, they want this abracadabra. And sometimes God does deliver us instantaneously. But many times, because God is a thorough teacher, he, allow, he allows us to walk out our deliverance, which means every day is a deliverance. Every day, every day, every day you walk out deliverance until you get an understanding of how you got in it and how not to go back into it. Because many of you all, if God would deliver you today, you'd be back in it tomorrow. So he allows you to stay in your mess and, and walk out of it little bit by little bit. And every day you take a little inch. Thank you, Lord. Every day you take, you're taking ground every day. That sometimes is how he works. But we want that. Give it to me now instantaneously without us having any effort. Like you're going to wake up and you're going to have a beautiful marriage. Well, y'all been cussing each other out all day. 
Y'all don't cuss each other out for, for, for 10 years and then you're going to wake up and have a beautiful how? Somebody got to decide, look, I'm going to start speaking life. I'm going to start speaking the word. I don't care what you say. I'm going to start speaking the word over this marriage. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? At some point, we have to, some, we have to make a decision. Because to change is to change. There's no way to change except to change. You can't say you won't change and don't change. That's the reason why I say, well, let me, let me, let me get on back into this. Before I get too far on that side. Look at this. It says, last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own self. There you go. That's your narcissism right there. Men shall be lovers of their own self. This is last day talk. This is one of the most prevailing attitudes. You don't know how hard it is to pastor this generation. It is very difficult. I don't care what. It's one of the most difficult generations to pastor because I'm telling you, everybody is self-centered. Everybody comes with a mentality that it is about them. They actually go to church. We actually have somebody uh, write the ministry or call the ministry and, and want to tell us how our church should be to fit them. Don't know them at all. Don't got no relationship. But yet I'm telling you what I want to see in your church in order for me to be. We didn't even ask you to come. But this is how people do. They shop church. They shop church and, and decide based upon how much red carpet you roll out for them, whether they're going to come to your church. As if you as, 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 as if you a used car salesman try, uh, uh, after a twirling a sign trying to get cats to come in. And so this is why people don't stay anywhere is because they came with an agenda and the agenda don't get fulfilled and they run. Sometimes they come because they want to be in a praise team or they have a they see something they want and it don't come to pass or they don't get it or the pastor don't get it and they and they run. It was it wasn't based on them wanting to be a part of an assembly. It was based on a, a, manip, a manipulation tactic to get in some kind of position. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is why people change church like underwear. Just go there and go there next where They go here. They, and they never put no roots down. Some of y'all been going here still ain't joining the church. Been going here all for years. Don't but, but, but still just pop in every now. Hey. Just pop in every now and then. That makes me leery when people do stuff like that. Just pop in all of a sudden. Then we here doing the hard work of listening. The sacrificing. See where y'all at now. So I'm talking about giving. You don't see it for six months. This disloyal spirit that no, don't put no roots nowhere. No, no past even know you. Oh, Lord Jesus. Don't no pastor even know you. You say you a Christian, but you don't, and you are not known in no assembly. If you don't show up, nobody misses you. That is an indictment. On your unfaithfulness that if you don't show up, nobody even notices it. If you died, the church wouldn't even know to come over your house. That's how, that's how less they see you. That's how uncommitted you are. Oh, Lord, help me. But yet, when we come in the house of God, we want the whole church to be committed to us. Be committed to my marriage. Be committed to my children. Be committed to my job. Be committed to my finance. Be committed to me. Be committed to me. This is the narcissistic attitude at its best. But then when we talk about sister got a need, brother over there got a need, the church has a need. See, we don't, we, we, we're not quick to meet those needs, but we, matter of fact, we, people are looking at, well, what about me? Why did God, God did not send you to an assembly to get only? But well, because men should be lovers of their own selves. It's this, I, I tell people all the time, I, I, I told my wife this years, I said, I can teach, you can teach a person anything but to care. Care is something that's got to be in a heart. You can't teach people to care. That's one thing I've learned over the years. I have tried. I have done every. I have I've wrote stuff out. I've been thorough in. It don't matter. If, uh, care is the, something that's got to be in your heart. You can't teach a person to be considerate. That has to be, that's, that's, a, that's a character issue. That has to be some in their character. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
And that's one of the things that I noticed that you can't, it's very difficult to teach people to be concerned about anything that doesn't have anything to do with them. If they can't benefit from it directly. Yeah, yeah. I am talking about self-addict. Addicted to yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look at this. It said men should be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. You know what that word is? Fond of money. Greedy. Greedy. Shoppers. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful and unholy. Unthankful. Say unthankful. unthankful. And unholy. unholy. Your children are a reflection of you. For some reason, we don't know that our child is just a carbon copy of us. We don't want to deal with that, and that's why we disassociate our child's bad behavior from ourselves. But your child's a copy of you. The way you respect is the way your child respects. They're a copy of you. That's why when you see a child act a fool, that's in the parent. They were taught that. You can't, dis you can't separate your child from you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We try to do it because we don't want to be responsible for what we know we sold into this child or what they saw. But you have to be honest that whatever your child is doing, it was based upon what they saw in you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If mothers and fathers fight all the time, the children will be fighting all the time. It's just a known fact. That's what happens. Sibling rivalries come from the parents having rivalry. Just too much. So many times we're setting up, we're setting our children up to be narcissistic and selfish based upon our own. See, you're not going to change. See, this is why I keep saying this over and over. I have people call me all the time, writing us, and I keep telling them over and over until you decide that you are not above the word of God and realize that the Bible tells you that you need a shepherd, you ain't going to never grow. See, 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 they want to counsel with me. They want to come talk to me. They want me to give me my time, but they don't want to follow order. It don't matter how much you talk to a person until a person decides, I'm going to do the word of God. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says, I'll give you shepherds after my own heart. Yes. This is not a, this is, listen, y'all. Uh, I don't know why. I just, I just get, a, a pastor is not a, 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 a good idea. It's not optional. This is God's best. This is not something. I'm not saying that because I need folk. I don't need nobody. Really, in reality, I could quit, go with my wife, and we could be all right. I could really, uh, trust me. This ain't, I don't get off on this. I used to when I was younger, but now I see the, the hell and what you go through. Man, I could give this up tomorrow. If, if the Lord wouldn't keep a hook in me, I could give this up. See, don't never get caught. Real leaders ain't trying to do this. Amen. See, y'all that want to do this is because you ain't called to do it. When real leaders are trying to get out of it because they, like Moses, man, I'm stuttering. I don't even know we want to go. Why? Because we understand Moses knew the people he had to deal with. It was his own people. They was the hardest folk, them Hebrew cats. Hardest cats to deal with because they're going to always come up with something, some type of murmuring that complaining of games, and you just get tired of it. So really, in reality, ain't no, ain't no real path. Ain't no real man of God wanting to do this. The ones running to this, that's because they don't know the responsibility side. They think they looking at this, the microphone. They looking at the, the prestige, the honor. They don't know the other side. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So, 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 being a, so I'm not saying that because I'm looking for nothing. But being a pastor, having a pastor is not a... Uh, optional. It's not, it's not a good idea. It's not just something that you can do or you can choose to do it or you cannot. Whenever you see people that don't have a real pastor that know them, they don't grow. Amen. They don't grow. They go to church, but they don't grow. They were they was 20 years ago talking that same old talk. God showed them. See, they, they, they too deep to have to be under pastor. We had somebody call us talking about, well, you know, my pastor. I'm like, well, stop right there. Stop right there. That's your problem. You too deep for your pastor. Your pastor don't have to know more than you to be your pastor. Amen. If I come to give you a meal, does it matter how much I know? 
What are you concerned with? The, I'm, the meal. I'm feeding you. So what, how much, it don't matter what I know. What matters is the meal. The pastor's job is to feed you. It don't matter that he know more than you or don't know more than you. That's not the issue. And the reason why you know more because you ain't got no job and you're on the Internet all day long. <laughs> you ain't got nothing else to do but be on there just researching all day. And you come with people with all this research and people, man, I've been at work. That's why I ain't with the flat earth. I've been at work. I don't know about the flat earth theory. But you know why you into that? Because you got all day to sit there and, and idle just do stuff on the internet. When cats is out there getting experiences with the Holy Spirit, and you can't get experience with the Holy Spirit without human interaction. So when I'm on a job, the Holy Spirit is teaching me how to love my co-workers and love folk. You can't get that isolated all by yourself in the house. Yeah, I ain't right. Are y'all heard? And so many times you'll find people, and that's one of the main things people will try to do is get you out from up under leadership. Yes, yes. Why am I even saying this? I wasn't even going this way. Make you feel like you stupid for being under leadership. Look at their life. Look at their life. Look at how they, have they progressed. Talking 20-year-old talk. Have they progressed? Look at their children. Look at their marriage. That's fruit. See, I, I, I don't want to hear what you're saying. I can't measure what you say, but you know what I can do? I can look at your fruit, and I can measure how you live, and I can see what your children look like. They trying to, how they going to counsel you and they child in jail? I, know. Come on, I ain't never understood. They, they divorced, but going to talk about marriage to you. No track record of success. But yet they got all the answers and you ain't never questioned that. Well, how do you know everything and you live worse? You almost like something wrong. You like schizophrenic in your mind. You literally crazy. I'll be thinking you on pills. Yet you come up with a word from God. These spaced out cats walking around the church. I know I see them all the time. Spaced out. This deep. This so deep. Now, nah, see, their spirit wasn't right right there. They see everything negative. They never see nothing good. That's how you know it ain't God. They never see good. When they come to a church, they take out their straight razor. They can't even say nothing good. Well, they do got a nice piano. That should be something. Say something good. They ain't the best singers, but boy, they're annoying to say something good. I ain't like that song. They sung that song so long and he preached too long and I don't understand why he preached. See? <laughs> but yet they think they call, they think God is speaking to them. That's the devil. Because a real, a person that's really full of the spirit sees good too. Are y'all there? Come on, can I help you? So let me say it again. Having a pastor is not optional. And listen, Going to a church does not mean you have a pastor. Right. Amen. Amen. Going to a church doesn't mean you have a pastor. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? You can go to a church for years and that pastor not know you. A shepherd is a personal thing. The reason why Jesus uh, always used uh, made sheep synonymous with the relationship from God the Father and his children was because if you understand anything about a shepherd, a shepherd has an intimate, personal relationship with the sheep. That's why the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. The sheep know the voice of the shepherd. They won't even follow nobody else. They understand the voice, so it's a, it's a personal thing. Amen. Amen. So just because you, so, so you could be in a church, but really not be under the shepherd. Are y'all there? Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because we have a generation totally void of order, totally out of order, running to and fro, doing what they want to do, living any kind of way they want to. But they're in trouble. And you know what? When they're in trouble, they bring their garbage to the church and expect you to help fix it with no order. How can I fix it when you won't get in the order? You can't visit a ministry and get your life fixed. You got to commit. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? So 
the, I'm not, listen, I'm not saying this because I won't know, I ain't saying it for that, I, trust me, believe me when I tell y'all, I ain't saying it for that, I can preach on the, I can go preach on the road, I can go on the road and preach at places and never have to come, so don't, don't, don't get caught up on that. I'm telling you what I've observed over the years is the people that run around talking about, you know, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, God is leading me and I'll, they, they are, they are, they are, they never grow because they never commit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And that's part of a narcissistic attitude that I can do it all myself. All I need is the end and all I need is to pray. All I need is I don't need nobody else. But the Bible says that God set in the church a fivefold ministry to edify you. And one of those gifts was a pastor's gift. And a pastor is the one that keeps you uh, connected. A pastor keeps you connected to the body of Christ. And I'm telling you all, many of, many of them people on Facebook, and y'all see them outside where they're disconnected. They have nothing but disrespect to say about the church. They have nothing but disrespect to say about men of God. I don't care what these men of God do. I'm telling you, it is a curse that will come on your life if you get over into that talking about men of God all the time. You got to realize that is, a, that is a bitter spirit. And the goal of that is to sow discord among the brethren to get people, uh, to get people not to receive. And that's why Satan, that's why these false doctrines crept in the church, because we were so busy hacking every man of God to death. We were so busy exposing every scandal and all that, 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 that people sat back and said, well, if, if y'all that bad, let me find something else. And they, that's, how, that's how the false doctrines got in. Because people thought because they were exposing the truth. It wasn't exposing the truth. You was making people lose, lose hope in the man of God and men of and women of God that God had in the church. That's why, the, but see, that's why we should have had enough sense to know, don't, 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 don't uncover ourselves to the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So what that done was, it made people say, well, if they live, ain't nobody right, so why go to church? Why need a pastor? So all I need to do is just, just, just read the word. And then what do you hear most people say? I don't go to church, but I, 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 I'm spiritual. I study the word. I'll be in my house studying. We, we, they call us like it all the time. And I'm sitting there saying, okay, yo, okay. But then when they call, they, they talk about, well, see, the, I'm, 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 I'll be sleeping. These demons are attacking. These demons attacking my mind all the time. And I'm trying, but, but, but God called me to expose. Okay, well, that's why these demons are attacking you. These spirits is in my life. See, they don't even know they online uh, typing and don't know it's a witch on the other line, on the other end of the conversation. They don't even know. Facebook got full of witches just, just sitting there getting, getting uh, initiated. I ain't got time to go into that. But that's what's happening to people who keep walking away from Christ. They get caught up into something else. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And without a shepherd with that shepherd's rod to snatch you back away from the edge, to get you off the edge, you will be right on over it. That's how they look. I'm telling you, when they get so spiritual, they get this. It's uh, Y'all know it's it's a way that's like you can see them coming. They, they spaced out looking. They, you know, what's wrong with them? They don't see. They went too deep. And, they, and, and, and if you hear them talk, they'll make the first thing come out of their mouth. They don't need no pastor. They don't need no. They don't, God's leading me. God's leading me. And they'll, that's how they look. Deep as they can be. No fruit. Usually they broke. Because they can't prosper in that. That's a curse. It doesn't lead to prosperity. I'm telling you, yeah, I'm saying it. Their marriage is usually messed up. Children messed up. But, but, but yet God is speaking. That's why I teach people stop at. Stop, stop. Look, you ain't got to try to hear nothing. You can hear it right in the Bible. If you live the word, you will hear the word. Y'all didn't catch what I said. See, bro, what people do is they get spiritual. They get so deep, they want to hear something spiritual so that because their motive is wrong. The goal is to make you think I'm spiritual so I can come and say, the Lord showed me, so I want you to think I'm spiritual so I can get a reward from you. That's why they want to hear something. But a person who really follows the word, they ain't looking to hear nothing. They, they study the word, they do the word, and because they do the word, the word comes up in certain, in certain situations. They're led by the word of God. But everybody, most of the people that run around talking about God said they lying. They are manipulators. 
That is the greatest form of manipulation you have ever seen. If somebody tell you God's, that's why they do it. They can't even talk without, oh, the Lord showed me, the Holy Ghost showed me. They ain't showed them nothing. It's a manipulation. Because if you do the word, you ain't got to always have God to co-sign it. Just say, this is what I saw. This is what I seen. This is what I said. Because I want you to decide whether you want to receive it or not. But if I put the God on it, I'm, making, I'm locking you in now. You got to believe I said God said it. That's how, the, the, and the way to test it is, just say I don't believe it and see if they get mad. If they get mad, that's them. That's them. If they get mad, oh, you don't think I'm spirit. That's them. But if it's really God, well, whatever. All right. They, 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 want, they still love you and everything. But if it ain't, but if, but if, if you say if, if you say that ain't God, they'll they argue up and down. Why? Because it's them. It's the flesh. Why am I even see? I wasn't even on. What I'm saying. Because we got these super deep people wrecking their families, wrecking folks' lives, leading them away from a shepherd, out into the wilderness. The wilderness is a place that you, oh, let me get, let me, let me get you some understanding. There is a place that you do go into the wilderness, but the wilderness is a place that comes after, after you've had a shepherd. And if I really get deep, this is intense. The wilderness is a place you go when your shepherd turn on you. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> As David David figured it out. Saul turned on him. Amen. But many of you all who say, I'm just being led and I'm in the wilderness, you in the wilderness because you want to be. <laughs> Ain't nobody chased you to the wilderness. You just went, you just left. <laughs> and then you led your family to the wilderness, and now that's why y'all in chaos. Yeah. Instead, of, and, 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 and see, as a man, as the head, you need to repent. See, as the head, see, if I come in and, and, and come in with some word doctrine that I'm going to teach my family and lead them away from God, then I need to repent. Ain't no need to get them right. I, Lord, it was me. Break me. You try and break your family. You try and break your wife. You led them out there. There's a word. See, bro. See, see, bro. I'm teaching you for real because I think God going to use you. See, that's, a, that's an anointed word. See what I just said? That was anointed. That hit somebody right where they need to be. That's what they don't want. Not that word right there. But that's what the Holy Ghost is saying. That's why I know people ain't got the Holy Ghost because they would not be saying everything they say. The Holy Ghost says to... <laughs> That's why I don't play with this. I don't, that's why if you know, if you, my wife said, if you know me outside of this pulpit, I, I talk less. I seldom talk. I don't talk on the phone. Do I didn't grab. People call me. I don't talk. I'm, what's up? What's up? I don't do all that. I talk, I, I talk a lot of prayer, but when I'm, I don't talk because I know I don't play with this. I don't play around with words. I know words are powerful and they're real. And I don't play around. I don't, I don't just talk to talk. I learned if I'm going to talk, it's because I got something to say. I don't, I, don't, I don't play around. So I do a lot of talking here, but when I'm out of this pulpit, my wife tell you, she'll she be talking, well, I talk to her, but, but she'll tell you, he, he don't say he don't say too much. Some of y'all be knowing, you be, some cats, they don't got to the point where they text me. That's about my speed to talk, but I really don't even like that either. I don't like text either, because text feel like tag. I'm going to leave this with you. I know you got it, and I know you read it. And now I'm sitting there, I got to respond to this. Am I going to respond? I like the old school, when the phone just rang, wasn't no voicemail. You don't know what happened. You don't know whether they are or not. Now we so hooked up, they go on Facebook. Oh, he see you was just on Facebook a minute ago. Let me instant message you. Oh, man, there's so much stuff. That's why I try to disconnect. Man. I be trying to unplug. I don't want all this connected. I don't want no. I don't want. Listen, and, 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 and that's just my way. It don't take nothing like that personal with me. You calling me, don't get offended because I don't answer everything. I don't. I learn you won't have peace. You won't have peace dealing with everybody's issues and everybody's problems, especially if you're a pastor. People would just do that all the day long, and they never think that you don't want to deal with them. And you'll be joyful about your life, and here they come. 
and everything is trash. Pastor! <laughs> Exclamation point. 911. And they want you to go into a hyper mode like them. We at the hospital. Well, me and my wife have a chance those eating. We're gonna finish eating. You ain't running. No, I ain't running. You know how much this costs? It's expensive, man. We're gonna sit here and eat. Tell the doctor, do what the doc, we'll be there. People get offended. Like you, Superman. I ain't God. What I'm gonna say on the phone, I'm gonna say in the room. Lord bless them, heal them. I can say that on the phone. You'll never have peace of mind till you learn to disconnect. You're too connected. Too much, too, it's you too connected. You gotta learn to disconnect. You'll never have peace of mind. Because people nowadays know you got that phone and they won't, when they hit you, they won't, they expect the response. And if you don't respond, they're offended. They're immediately offended. They go into they, 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 they witchcraft investigation mode and start trying to track you down through social media and figure out what you... Some of y'all ain't number stalkers. <laughs> stalkers, man. Be all online stalking, the st stalking cats. Looking up background checks on people. They do stuff like that. They be online. I'm telling you, bro. They'll go online and look, look, go to the, to the background check and look you up. Stalkers, man. That ain't relationship. That ain't relationship. Let me get done. Let me get done. Look at this. Now, you need to know, folks, if they're around your children, but I mean, come on. If you, 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 why would you leave a person? If I got to look you up on the background, I don't, you ain't going to be around my child. All right, look at this. Now, let me get to this. <laughs> what was I saying before that? I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? I know that. I'm, I'm on that scripture. I was, it was something I was saying. I had a point. I, what is it? If you live the word, you hear the word. I'm past that now. Let's just get back to this word. Look at verse 3. Now listen. Y'all ready? Narcissism, it breathes. The next scripture in verse 3 says, without natural affection. Man, we, need this. we really need to deal with that. Natural. That means... Something that's common, something that you're supposed to do. Natural effect, like, 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 like getting pregnant and carrying your child to term. That's natural affection. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Not having, not a, being a grown man, having desire for a child. It's not natural. That's without natural effect. See, something should kick in and say, that's a child. See, that's it. But see, that's not there. They don't have natural affection. They have perverted intention that really came from pornography. See, the problem in the church is we lie. Pornography is the church sin. It is what people are really into. Women and men. It ain't, they, they, they make you think it's just men. But these women's minds are as perverted. Right. Pornography is one of the greatest secret sins that there is. The reason why is because pornography doesn't necessarily have symptoms as drugs do. Amen. If a person do drugs long enough, you know he's smoking. Yeah. He's smoking, she's shooting, they doing, because you're going to be able to tell. But pornography, a person have a suit on, you never knew what they were doing last night. The problem is the addiction part is the same as a drug. Amen. And, and the same way that a drug, you're going to need more and more of a drug, you need more and more pornography. The Bible says lust is never satisfied. So y'all wonder how these word crimes, how people end up killing child, you know, having sex with kids. You wonder where that come from? Why is you seeing all this sex crime? Because it started in pornography. This easy, this, this simple pornography. Because lust will continue to build and not be satisfied. And the problem with that, see, it used to be years ago, we, we, you, know, we, you, know, you could monitor it a little bit because you had to go out of the house and go get books or tapes. Or something. But see, now you got the internet. And whatever lustful thought come through your mind, you can see it right there. You can type it. So let's say you're sitting there watching something and then see after a while, uh, do y'all want this or not? 
See, 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 see. Wow, you ain't gonna get off on straight sex. It won't. You won't. You can see it, but you won't get off on it because it's normal. See, lust has become. See, lust. See that level of lust is no normalcy. And because it's your normalcy, you're not aroused by it. It's normal. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So I need some more stimulants. I need something else to stimulate me. So now I need to see something else. That sight that excites me. Say amen. amen. So I'm going from just straight up what I was watching. Now I'm going to let me see some woman, man, man, woman, two men, women. Them, and then, and all, of a sudden, all of a sudden, a thought comes to my mind, a child. And that bill, that's where it built from. But it built from Playboy, just watching pictures, maybe a swimsuit issue. It starts real small, but it builds. And before you know it, guys is out at night, cruising the streets. Then it goes from prostitutes to rape. Oh, boy. Y'all wonder why these boys are raping now? These boys are raping. These young boys are raping. You wonder why they're raping? Pornography. They done had 10 years of this internet. And the thing I told, remember I told y'all years ago the internet was for, for, for pornography? I told y'all, so it was just a it was just a syringe to get a straight shot of, <laughs> in your vein. That's what it is. It delivers pornography straight. That's what that's what it is. Some of y'all, you know, how in the world can you sit there and and just if you type something in and there it is? I mean, come on, man, that's just too. You ain't got no boundary. I mean, you can't stop. If I, I, I thought about it. I said, Lord, I'm so glad I'm saved. If I wasn't saved, well, Lord, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be saved. Because ain't no way I could have knew that I, I could not know this was existed back when I wasn't saved. I mean, because I how can I not? I, I don't have, I'm not regenerated. I mean, I'm full of lust. And you mean I can just see what I want, when I want, how I want? And this is, and this is, but, but you know what, now, 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 you don't know why I'm saying this, but this is, but the Bible says men shall be lovers. This is part of, this is what pornography is. Amen. Amen. It's what it is. Actually, if I really break down narcissism, it's self-eroticism. <laughs> That's a good definition. Self-eroticism. Meaning love of yourself. Amen. There's no greater love of yourself than pornography. Because pornography leads to masturbation. Amen. Masturbation is the love of you. <laughs> see, y'all want to see people want to hear it at church. But I'm trying to tell y'all that's what it is. And it ain't just in pictures, because some of y'all got this 50 shades of gray mind and you read pornography. They get women with that. Usually it's the reading pornography because y'all want to see the words. Y'all want to hear the sweet nothings. And and, but that's more corrupting because you have to put your imagination in with the words. And that can even be more corrupting on your mind. And see, many people don't want to deal with this. And so that's why I told y'all, my son's 21 and my other son's 18. Do you know how I told y'all they didn't get no internet access for until they was grown? As long as they lived in my house, they ain't had no phone. I know what a phone is. They didn't get no access because I understood. How can I? Here's some candy. Don't eat it. <laughs> what, what he, what, here's some candy. Go on. Don't eat it. What are you going to do as soon as you get out? He's going to eat it. Well, that's what I mean. How, here, 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 here's, here's the phone. Don't, don't look at pornography. But it's right here. All I got to do is. So my, my job was to try to protect them. Now, now, now that they're grown, that's on them. They want to get into it, that, 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 that's, that's on them. They have to give an account to the Lord. But my goal was to protect them while they were young Amen. before they got their mind warped when they wasn't ready to handle that. Yeah. And one of the main problems with your children is their minds have been blown. Yeah. Some of y'all in her minds have been blown. That's what's wrong with you. See, 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 in order to be, get, can I go deeper here? Y'all yeah. want this or not? Yeah. In order to get demon possessed, Satan has to blow your mind first. He got to open you up for his spirit. See, so what he does is, is he gets you obsessed so you can see something that you wasn't supposed to see and it becomes an obsession. And you can like, like, have you ever seen something like you seen somebody get killed and it, it's, you start obsessing about it? If you keep meditating on that, you, a spirit of death will come. 
Because whatever you met, you, you pull stuff to you. So Satan knows if I can get this image in them and keep them obsessing over it, they'll open up for a spirit. That's how you get possessed. So when this child was supposed to be doing ABCs, somebody clicked on something that wasn't, it blew his mind. Oh, I wasn't supposed to see that. Now, because he's not mature enough to rationalize what he saw, the Bible said he leaned towards his own understanding. Now, this, but now, now, and because he's meditated on it long enough, it becomes a part of his thinking, his psyche. So now he don't know, you don't know why you have a tendency towards certain sex now. There was a stimulation, you, you were stimulated when you shouldn't have been. Y'all ain't ready, y'all know. See, but we don't want to talk about this because this is where the real issues, this is where we really live. This is what we're going through, this is what we're dealing with. Your sons while we're masturbating, trying to figure out why they're doing this. I'm trying to tell you why. You expose them. You got to shut it off. Is this too much? Men shall be lovers of themselves without natural affection. That's another thing without natural affection, meaning not even really wanting a, 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 not a want, not to the point where you no, don't even want a relationship to get a marriage to go on into marriage, to build a family. People don't even want that no more. Right. Now I just want to hook up with you to have sex. That's not even natural affection. Yeah. Truth breakers, false accusers, uh, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. There we are. That's where we're coming to. This is, where, this is what's happening now. They're despising those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure. Y'all there? More than lovers of God. Say lovers of pleasure. I've learned that I've learned I don't owe you much if you love pleasure more than God. Amen. Don't expect me to bend over backwards for you and you love your pleasure more than you love God. See, I can't even help you. Amen. See, we have to stop this thinking it's automatic. You have to decide. Living for God is a decision. Every day I have to wake up and decide. Today, I'm going to live for God. Amen. Today, I'm going to love my wife. Today, I'm going to love my children. Today, I'm going to stay at home. Today, I'm going to work. Today, I'm going to go to church. Today, every day. It's a decision. You will never wake up and it'll be automatic. The same way you never wake up and never want to go to work. Soon as the clock. Come on, you thinking about, do I need this job? <laughs> it never changes. Because something about your flesh, comfortable sleep, you don't feel like getting up. But you have to decide. And until we stop this thinking that it's going to be a magical thing, and we're not going to have to put any effort forth, then we're never going to change. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now, I told y'all the message was going to be tight. But I really believe that there is a mentality that is prevailing that needs to be broken. I really believe that until we get to the point that we stop pacifying people and demand change. But that's why you have to really respect and honor your pastor. So that when he demands that, you won't get offended and run off, but you realize he's trying to help you because he loves you. Amen. So it used to be years ago, I didn't counsel marriages. Years ago, people would hate to come to me because I'll say, okay, here's the altar. Get down there. Stay there till y'all love each other. That's what they did. They stayed on that altar crying out till they fell in love again. Or, or at least they didn't tell me no more. Because they knew, hey, he's going to make us pray. Now they, my, my child's going through this. Pray him through. This is where you get your work done. This ain't just for, this ain't just for coming up after, after Sunday. This is where your work happens. This is where you go to work at. This is where you do business with God, where you petition God and you begin to be real, get serious about God. That's what this, that's why I don't always play around with that. I want you to know when you come up here, it's for you to get serious with God. Time for you to do business. Say do business.
and you won't break. Oh, 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 oh that's what I'm. Let, let, me, let me get done. That's what it was. Thank you, Lord. Let me, I'm, I'm going to be done right here. Narcissistic traits. Give you another definition. Here. A pervasive pattern of grandiosity. In fantasy or behavior. Need for admiration. Lack of empathy. That's a good word. Lack of empathy. Say lack of empathy. Meaning, unable to feel other people's pain. You never you notice that? How, that's, how can a grown man rape a child? He don't have empathy. He can't even feel this pain. That's why I'm, 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 I'm okay with him being raped, the man. I'm okay with somebody doing him like that. Because he needs to feel the pain of the child. I guarantee you, if he feel the pain he inflicted on the child, he'd think twice about doing that again. Look at this. It says uh, a lack of empathy beginning by a early adulthood and present in various contexts as indicated by five or more of the following. That means I got eight of them, but I'm going to give you. If you got five of them, then you're a narcissist. <laughs> Number one, has grandiose sense of self-importance, exaggerates achievements and talents, expects to be recognized as superior without consumer achievement. In other words, ain't worthy of no honor, but yet won't an honor. Never done nothing to be honored, but yet expect honor. These people show up at your graduations and all of your wonderful times when y'all celebrating, they show up and come in and want to be honored. <laughs> That's when they come. All of a sudden, when you make it, they want to show up. Oh, I knew you was going, I just knew. They didn't sow nothing into you when they could have been getting honored when you was down there. They waited till you got somewhere. These are glory stealers. Number two, pre preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success. Oh, I know people like that. They talk big talk, got big thoughts, but never execute anything. And so they become users, running around looking for somebody to invest in what they want to invest in. How am I going to believe in you and you don't believe in you? Don't step to me with a dream. Amen. I don't believe in that. If I tell you I'm going to do so, I'm going to do it. Amen. Don't step me talking about, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, you know, I learn, I'll be doing stuff and then people come say, you know, that's exactly what the Lord gave me. Well, then why don't you do it? Right, right. That's exactly what I want to do. Well, why, what do you, go and do it. But when you step to, if, if, especially if you if you're an older man or woman and you talking about, I'm you just fitting to getting rid of wood or could have said, man, come on. You have an issue where you can't be getting nothing off the ground, and it's probably because there's a character flaw that you need to sit under somebody that they can teach you how to overcome that. Amen. And of everything, you're resisting that. I'm talking straight talk. Anytime, you, anytime success uh, eludes you, it's because you have a character flaw. That means something in your character will not allow you to be successful. Sometimes it's laziness. Sometimes it's unfaithfulness. Sometimes it's a bad attitude. That people slam the door on you when you, you, you know, you get a door open, all of a sudden they slam it on you because you, you, you had an attitude, didn't show up, didn't do something. See, it's your character. And so, but you'll never change it until you're under somebody who can point it out and say, man, this is what's wrong with you. But if you don't respect nobody like that, you're not going to never sit under nobody long enough. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you'll keep thinking it's them. It's people. They just, people just ain't giving me a chance. No, they're giving you a chance. Think about all, these people have a lot of chances. I remember I was helping a brother one time, and he came to me, man, I, man people just won't help me. Out. So I started helping him. I started helping a brother. Started trying to get a brother money. Said he wanted to go to her and get, you know, get his degree in this and help him. Man, I was helping a brother. Brother wouldn't show up. I said, brother, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't people won't help you. I said, brother, you think you're a victim. I said, brother, you about to victimize me by using me. It's not people won't help you. See, see, these brothers talking about they can't get a job. It ain't, it ain't that. It, it, it ain't that. No, it's, it's my record. It's my fault. It, 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 no, it ain't what it is. It ain't what it is. That's the company's hot people like that. It's the fact he won't apply himself. He will not get up at that temporary service time. I don't want her at. 
That's about four in the morning. You got to get up and be down there to be in line to get the job. He lying. He don't want to work. I heard him lies before. I'm building my own business. Stop it. Go get a job. We need order. I need to know how much bread is coming today. That's a way that most black men live unaccountable. See, when, see, having a job is spiritual. It teaches you discipline, humility. But when brothers don't work, have a job, they are the most undisciplined brothers you'll find. Why would, you, why would you get in a relationship with a man that ain't got no job? He's already telling you. You got to have a job. Jobs are spiritual. God gave Adam work. It was spiritual. First thing Adam got, so the second thing was work. First thing was the word didn't work. Word, don't touch a tree. Work. Name the animals. Shelter. Garden. Then the woman. Y'all working backwards. They getting the woman first. The woman got the shelter. And she's working. And she knows more of the word than he do. So it's backwards. And you wonder why it ain't working. Y'all heard what I'm saying? Can we keep going? He's preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited <laughs> fantasies of unlimited success. Power of brilliance. I've had brothers like that so much come to me. I had one brother, boy, he came to me every day he had a new idea. And, he's, and I said, brother, let me, let me help you. I said, do you see the face your wife make when you say this stuff? That's how I feel. She know you ain't going to do it. Stop coming to me with that. See, that's, that's how you really know a brother. Bro, I'm telling you, the way you really know a brother, when brother say stuff, look at his wife. She'll be like this. This nigga said that last time. He always saying stuff. Because she remember, we invested that last. Remember we took our tax money invested in that? See, she know it ain't going to work. So, so don't, so the best business, the best investigation, whether you want to invest in him, is just look at the wife. The wife will take. And then, and, and I'm going to tell you, and when he's talking, he'll keep looking at his wife. Because he know. <laughs> he's trying to get her to co-sign back, didn't we, baby? Baby, didn't we do that? Because he's trying to get her to co-sign. Because she's over and she know it. But in order to fix that, in order to fix that, brother, stop overlooking that. And find out why your wife, it ain't because she nasty. It's because your track record's bad. You fail so much, and you don't want to acknowledge your failures. And when she tell you that you fail, you say, you just don't believe in me. No, you, ain't nothing to believe in. You got to have something to believe in. Yeah, yeah. Y'all think my wife would follow me if I failed all of my life? She would be a fool to keep on following this brother. Ain't, I ain't got nothing off the ground. I keep telling her what a could a dollar in the dream. 20 years talking about a dollar in the dream. You need to hit one time. Even a fool win the lottery. <laughs> now you got to get some. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We drag our families along with our foolishness. And then we get mad when it don't work, and then we blame our wives for not being with us, for not being for us. You think she wanted you to fail? You crazy? Woman wants you to succeed. Are y'all there? Believes that he or she is special and unique and can only be understood by somebody with higher status. I can leave that alone. Y'all, that speaks for itself. <laughs> Requires excessive admiration. These are performance-oriented people. That means if you don't pat on them and tell them how good it was, they stop. Right. They need to constantly be affirmed. That was good. That was good. That was good. One, 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 one. That's, that's beautiful. 
If you tell them, if you don't compliment they look, they think something wrong with them. That's a real low self-esteem that somebody got to tell you you look good. I don't even understand that. It seemed like the better you women look, the lower, the lower your self-esteem is. But you go get some busted up chick and she be confident. <laughs> be confident. I ain't, I, I, I've, I've said I've seen a big chick ain't confident. I don't even understand that. Be, just be confident. Big and confident. These chicks be slim, looking good, and they, they got the worst esteem in the world. Need excessive admiration. That's what's behind all this hair and makeup. Need excessive admiration. Excessive. This, this, this look at me. This look at me. This compliment. That's why y'all be taking so many selfies. I want to put the eyeliner so I can see. Your esteem is low. Need to be admired. Verse, uh, number five has a sense of entitlement. Unreasonable expectation of especially favorable treatment or automatic compliance. You ever seen people like that feel like they, they just join a company, they're supposed to be leading? You just hire them, they tell you what to do. We do that. We had years ago, we, we hire people at daycare, we hire people, they try to tell us what to do. Like, I just hired you, you're going to tell me what I'm, how we're supposed to do stuff. Just come into church, I'm going to see you need to put that right there. Man, we've been here 20 years. And see, a lot of times, if you come in a ministry and you don't have that, you don't understand how far we come, you won't have the honor and respect. Because you won't realize how far we came. See, you will be looking at stuff like, like you'll see something like, like you'll see something like, uh, let me see. Let me find something. Like, that's towel. That, see that till and towel? You'll see that and be like, why that till and towel? They, they need to fix that. But you don't know, we've been, me, I'll tell you, Rod, you see how you come into church and then it be like, like the heat's on. <laughs> but you know, there's certain areas in it because the old building is still cold. You can go out there, it could be cold. You go to the bathroom, it could be cold. And that'll be a person's problem. See, you don't know how we, what we know. We don't know how far we came. You don't know that was a time, what no furnace. We up in her church. <laughs> Y'all remember we was in Portland, we churching. Wasn't no furnace. Y'all know them little blowers, that's what we had. We, man, in the winter, we had to come downstairs in, in the winter. Churching. Came a long way. So now, but see, you won't respect that because you came in on this. <laughs> we know when it wasn't nothing but one bathroom down there. And that one was messed up. And me and my sons remodeled the boys and made them up the bathroom. But see, you going out. Uh, see, but you don't know how far. See, see, when you don't understand the struggle, you, you, you have no appreciation. So what you should do is, is, is when you get around people, start finding out they struggle. You, you respect them better. You find out what they've gone through, how they got where they are. See, that's why when you get around couples, you're talking about they marriage. You want to know, well, you know, they start telling you they struggle. You start appreciating it more. Like, ooh, it, it is good. Like when that couple got a uh, uh, vow renewal. Well, you know why they vow renewal? Why, well, well, bless me, because I heard they told me about what they could come through. So the way, the way to grow in honor for people, the way, and, then, and then you can reap honor, the way to grow in honor is begin to care about other struggle. Begin to care. Begin to talk to people about their struggle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And people love, people talk about, people love to talk about struggle. After you get out of it. <laughs> but you love it. You don't mind talking about it because that is a testimony. Let me get done. Is this helping anybody at all? Lacks empathy, I already said that. Unwilling to recognize or identify with feelings and needs of others. It's often envious of others or believe that others are envious of him or her. Shows arrogant, haughty behavior or attitudes. These are narcissistic traits. We all have some. Come on, we all have some. I mean, that's just human nature. We all have some. I think the issue is, I think we'll always have some. I think the issue is not to allow those things to dictate our relationship. Are you understanding what I'm saying? 
not using those things in a relationship to manipulate or, or to be over, or to hurt people. You hear what I'm saying? There was a person online that was talking about, uh, they, they had wrote me and said how much, like you, like, 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 they was talking about how much people have hurt them and what people have did to them and people are so wrong and, and they need, and, and, and I said, well, and, 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 the, and the sister was going on and on and I said, well, who have you hurt? And it shocked her because she never dined on her, honey, you have a trail to hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. The way to break, the way to break your selfishness is recognize that. If you ain't got no, if you can't think of nobody, you got children. You've hurt them, sure enough. Everybody has hurt somebody. When you acknowledge what you have done to others, it breaks your victimhood. It stops you from thinking, being entitled, thinking you are a victim. When you really, this is how you can easily forgive folk. The easiest way to forgive folk is recognize I done that. I did that. I did exactly. That's why, if, that's why husband and wife don't forgive each other because they don't realize I did it. I did exactly what you did. That's how you break that narcissistic behavior by recognizing that if it had not been for the Lord, everything I'm judging you for, I either did it or would do it. That's why we need the mercy and grace of God so much. Because you never, that's why one of the, one of the things I've learned is be careful when you see something out of order, out of place. Be careful when you see something wrong with people. Be careful when you, you better be careful because I've learned that God is, has a sense of humor. God has a sense of humor. God will let you go through exactly what they went through. You be talking about people's kids, God will let your child do exactly what their child did. And you will find that, and you will find true humility come out of your heart and you will have more respect for the person you was talking about when you realize, you mean they were standing up under all of that? That's why I be careful when you talk about, girl, if it was me, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't even be with him. Girl, you don't know what you would do. You, you don't know how, how much game that guy got. You don't know how much he got that girl mind. I would, I, girl, I would just leave. Why can't you just leave him? You don't know. You don't know her, you don't know her deficiencies. You don't know the voids this guy's feeling. You don't know what she think is love. You don't know that little light she's holding on to, and here you old. Oh, it was me. See, it's easy to talk when you ain't in it. But the way to relate is to go and talk about, let me, t tell me about the struggle. Talk to me about your struggle. See, you can empathize. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I learned my lesson from, I'm telling the lesson I had to learn, I'm done, I'm closing. I had to learn my lesson. I've learned this the hard way. When I first got into the Lord, you know, I was so spiritual and discerning. I just see stuff, I said, brother, that ain't right. They were doing that, they wouldn't be right. See, they was just living the word, they wouldn't. That wasn't even there. You know how, that's how y'all, when you're young and God, you don't know nothing. You just talking, you know, you just talking, ain't been through nothing, just talking. Don't even know trials. <laughs> you living on the residue of salvation, you just flying around, and all of a sudden you, you become an authority on everything. See if they, see if they loved each other, they married to work. You know, see what's wrong with them. She don't pray, he don't pray, they don't know. See if they love God. See, that's how you talk, because you don't, that's, that's immaturity. That's why I don't listen to children, they don't know nothing. Have an intellectual conversation with a child, don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. If, I, if you give a child one trial, they be done. Just take this. They be, oh, I can't, how y'all stand? I told my son, I told my son one day, I said, we was talking, and I, and I said, I said, uh, uh, I think my wife was talking about the light bill or something, and, um, and, and he didn't know how much it was. You know, see, see, they was just skating around like, oh, oh we get our own apartment, and we, did, you know, just talking, this talk. Okay, the, the, the LG&E, it's your whole check. You ready to pay that? Guess what that did? Appreciation. Appreciate you. I told him the other day to get the car fixed. I said, that's a couple of hundred to get the car fixed. He didn't know that. He thought cars just ride. He didn't know that when we took it to the mechanic, we got to pay for this. I said, you going half since you're driving. See, but that, what did that do? Appreciation. Why? Because I taught him to struggle. Amen. See, you're doing your children a disservice when you don't teach them how hard it was to, to buy them shoes, to buy them clothes, to put that food there. 
you making them think you giving them a sense of entitlement when they come and plop down and don't have no honor and respect for how that food got there. Amen. You take them. Come, 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 come. come on. Come on. Come on out here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Take them to work. Come on. Stay in here. Eight hours. Stay in here. You know how you take a child to go to church, take a child to work day. Sit here and watch me. Sit here and watch me work. Watch how long I work. Watch how long this is. See how we appreciation. But when your child you come in the house and Jordans pop on their feet, they don't know how them Jordans got there. They don't know how hard it was to get them shoes. You make them appreciate. And that's how that's how you would draw people. You come out of your selfishness and you would draw people that will begin to love you is when you begin to care about their struggle. Amen. Begin to care about that. Say amen. amen. That's how you truly love folk. Amen. You can't love people and don't care about, about what people go through. I've never seen people. How can I love you and don't care about you? Amen. I'm concerned about you. Amen. That's a shepherd's heart. It burns me up because I, I, I'm only one person. I can't get there about it. And that's why I'll be trying to teach y'all to be concerned about each other. It shouldn't be where only I'm concerned about folk. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? This is, a, this is a real struggle in the body of Christ because people don't have that love for each other no more. Last thing, I'm done. I was say, shoot. <laughs> this is He said, shoo. <laughs> I heard something. I do it. <laughs> shoo. <laughs> I thought he was done. Shoo. <laughs> yeah, I'll quit that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. <laughs> Either made whoever that was, you did it. You made me quit. <laughs> I lost my thought. I lost everything. I lost my thought. So maybe that was the Lord. <laughs> made me stop. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, son, real quick. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, say mend, mend. What, I what I broke. This is a real important principle right here. Because this is part of breaking this narcissistic, selfish behavior. Sometimes we always want to go to God and say, God, I'm sorry, forgive me. But we never hear God say, and then go back and fix this. Sometimes you got to go back and fix it. One of the things we do the most, I'm sure I've been guilty of myself, is how we take for granted how much we've hurt our children. Because they're young, they got to listen to us. They can't say nothing. Shut up. <laughs> but you have to learn to go back and mend. There's many relationships right now. People, see, that's why I say any, people, that, people that have hurt you, it's only based upon you reaping a lot of what you sowed. Go back and mend. Amen. And listen, when you go back to mend, it doesn't mean that person going to be all loving you and liking you. They may still not like you. They may still hold their grudge. But you're releasing it from yourself. Amen. You're saying, Lord, I want to break this selfishness in me. Amen. I always say one of the hurtfulest, one of the most hurtful things is to let somebody die. And you should have mended. You should have tried to mend that. Amen. Now, God gives, us a, God gives us points for effort. We may not succeed in mending it, but because we went to do it, we, we took the effort. So I, I, I encourage you to make the effort because that's the only way you're going to break that. That selfish is where we wait. You ever seen somebody waiting on somebody to come to you? You waiting, on, you, know, you waiting on them to come to you instead of you going, instead of you saying, I know I got it in my heart. Sometimes we have that stuff in the church. Brothers and sisters hate, mad at each other. Don't, I'm waiting. They ain't saying nothing to me. They ain't speak to me. I ain't speak to them. That's foolishness. The Bible says if you got all in your heart towards your brother, you go to him. Get it right. See we, see, we want God to do what he's supposed to do, but we lacking in what we're supposed to do. So, 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 if, so if, somebody, if, it's, if it's somebody in your life and you know in your heart I got issues, man, deal with that. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Before you develop a, a narcissistic personality 
And then that's when you drive people away and nobody won't be around you. Nobody wants to deal with you because you're so self-centered. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Thank the Lord for a second chance to get it right. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Come on, lift your hands up to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not going to give an altar call today. I will make sure everybody is saved, but I won't give an altar call. Because I want you right now to search your heart really seriously. Getting our heart right with Christ is the most important thing. It's the best thing to do. Who cares what people think? I want to be right with God. And what is going to stop us from being right with God is how we treat people. God is concerned more with how we treat people than anything else. Because the way we show our love for God is the way we is how we treat people. And so I want to make sure that my heart is right. And if there's anybody that you know in your heart that you ain't stuff ain't right with, make a commitment today. I'm gonna try to mend it. I'm gonna try to get it right. May not be able to fix it, but I'm gonna make an effort. I just want God to see I made an effort. Father, we ask you right now to strengthen us. Let, our, let us break our pride and our ego, whatever might be hindering us or holding us back from doing your will. We ask you to move it out of our life right now. Father, deliver us from us. Deliver us from our mindsets, our mentality. Deliver us from the way we are. Take away all of the, 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 the need to be right. You're the only one right. Nobody's right but you. Father, we release you to move. Move upon our heart. Move upon our heart, Father. We release you to do it. Father, we thank you so much that today you're going to move in our life. You're going to open up the doors for us to get some things mended. Lord, we burnt bridges we weren't supposed to burn. We weren't supposed to burn that bridge. Father, We show us how to mend it, how to build it back. Some of us have burned bridges with children. We sh that wasn't God's will for you to burn bridges with your daughter, with your sons. You burn bridges with your mother. You burn bridges with your people. God didn't tell you to burn those bridges. Ask God how to build it, how to mend that fence. Some of you have burned bridges with baby daddies and baby mamas. But the children need both of y'all. Figure out how to mend it. Ask God how to mend it. God, only you know how to fix this thing. And we don't have the answer, so we ask you to help us. Come on, say, help me, Lord. Hallelujah.